there's of course now a lot of focus on using ray tracing for intersecting triangles. But it's not the only thing we can do with ray tracing. And the DXR API actually supports custom intersection shaders. So you can put, you can put bounding boxes in a data structure and then in the shader yourself compute an intersection. So why would you do that instead of just doing it in compute in the first place? One is to get you know, NVIDIA RTX acceleration of it. If you do it compute, then you're bound by the regular. I mean, that's not so much we can do to optimize it. The other thing is that with DXR, you get actual shade evalu evaluations at the hit points, um, and you get individual resources bound to those shaders. So it allows a lot of flexibility. One use case is intersecting hair strands for hair rendering in one of these cu custom intersection shaders. And you can generalize this to other small and thin objects, you know, wire, fences, arrows, you know, things that when you move away that are distant, where, where triangle rasterization is just not the good solution anymore, where you end up with just a flickering mess due to all the small triangles. So in some cases, ray tracing can both be faster and give you better quality for, for these difficult objects. So here's an example of real-time hair rendering. So we have internal work that has, you know, managed to solve this, this intersection test very, very efficiently. So that you can intersect, you know, not only 100 or 1,000 hairs per, uh, per frame, but actually do it on a full hair model. So this is from a very hairy person with one, over 1 million hairs. And it's rendered in real time by intersecting the actual geometry through custom intersection shaders. On a similar note, um, you can do the same, same type of algorithm for rendering tess tessellated geometry. So the fundamental problem with tessellation and ray tracing is that normally you would have to tessellate your mesh, then build an acceleration structure of the tessellation, and then trace against that, which can be fairly expensive. Um, instead of using a custom intersection shader and doing the analytical you know, doing the subdivision inside your shader, it's often actually a you know, preferred approach to it. So I'll show a video here, which is running, this was done a few years ago, so it's running on a, in optics on an older GPU, but even then it was real time. So it's ray tracing subdivision surface on the GPU. So the next step in this is of course port this to DXR and you know, use it on, on real big assets but it's showing as a proof of concept that it's a, it's a feasible approach. The benefits is that you get you know, perfect normals. There's no artifacts from tessellation anymore. You don't work with a triangle mesh in this case. 